you know we're getting serious when we put him on that. The flannel. Oh, yeah. We're going to do the top five and go nightclub go up. Hi, everyone. Judith Theodore here, the internet's newest, busiest, and now most trusted source for music opinions to form. <laughs> I'll be reviewing the Red Veil album, Niagara, American Rapper. Now, recently, Red Veil had, a, had an Anthony Fantano of the Needle Drop channel review some of his music, stop 10 seconds into the review, and read about how he's a derivative Earl clone and he didn't like any of his music. To which was followed by Red Veil saying it's cool, but he would like some actual criticism. Then followed by a very, very, very childish Twitter rant by the 34-year-old man towards the 16-year-old rapper. Yes, yes, he's 16. That aside, I'd say that Red Veil, for a person that age, handled the drama very maturely for someone of his age, dare I say more maturely than the 34-year-old man. And that's all I want to say. I just need to bring that context in because it's the only reason I even came into listening to this record. Thought I would give him a chance considering the needle drop did not. And, you know, I'll give him a flannel-type review. <laughs> a flannel-type review that he deserves. One from me. A random person on the internet. Red Veil. Not much is known about him besides the fact that he's a rapper, he's 16, and he's clearly from the United States of America. I tried going on his Twitter, Spotify, not much information there is about him. And any description he does give is very, um, not helpful. But, that aside, I, before I listened to his album, I dove into his first album, Bittersweet, and, you know what? It was made in 2019, he was 15, it is. For a 15 year old, that is a great production, and I know he's doing that shit out of his home. And I don't know if he does do his own production, or he's just finding a lot of beats. But if he does, I applaud him for that. But if not, good beat selection nonetheless. Something that does need to be applauded. Someone who's 16 already knows a good instrumental from a shit one. And it's a pretty decent project. It's got some songs that I came away liking with adding to my playlists that will come up frequently. And just pretty decent production. There's a, you can tell there's a really good is an ear for a good soul sample and a vocal loop and really beautiful lo-fi jazz but um it was still a pretty rough project and i may review it one time but i'd say just oh, if you like his new album give this one a listen you will like this one but that is not the topic for today today we'll be discussing niagara one thing i did notice about this record was i checked through the writing credits despite three tracks being written by another person everything is written by Red Veil himself, and that's amazing. This man is writing his own material, and it's very well put together, solid rhymes, solid storytelling, and he has very little help coming from anyone else. So it just shows you that he is his own artist, which you don't even see that much. Like, you'll just see stacks upon stacks of writers for a lot of people, but someone this young to be writing his own stuff that's this solid, that is generally studio quality radio, music is amazing. Niagara. It is a 10 track album running 24 minutes. The instrumentals on this thing, they are phenomenal. Everything about them it is soulful, jazzy. There is vocal loops and vocal samples spliced throughout the entirety of the record which are very well done and just add to the record's narrative, to the beat in the background, giving it some fluidity and some, you know, a unique sound that is may have been used before but I've just I just it's done too well and it's not cheap and this is a person who's making this shit out of his own home fucking bravo to that the album generally delves into a lot of themes especially with the current state of America being you know not too very good for someone who's 16 he does have a lot to say and when he does say something it is quite substantive if not a bit depressing and very melancholic for someone who this young already recognizing the state of his country and how it affects him personally as a person of color in the United States. It's just really eye-opening that someone like that can already know. There's just a lot of stuff about in this album from just his general anxieties, his need to success, the grind he's on, moving on, and sadly eventual regression throughout 
this journey that he will face, which is a thing that a lot of people will go through. But I'd say for someone who's this young, tackling this very, very, very well in an extremely mature way that many artists haven't even reached now who've been rapping in the game for years, this is damn good. First track, Campbell, is a very string-heavy, soulful song that has a really, really beautiful, fast-paced vocal sample that interloops throughout, and he's just on beat with everything. There's very small inflections that have like an Earl Sweatshirt kind of quality. The instrumentals generally tend to be a bit more lo-fi where his voice can be really absorbed into it, but it's not really consistent. It's just more this moments of lo-fi-ness in it, so it's not really like Earl where he's consumed by the instrumental. It's more just like the instrumental is very consuming, and he's riding that wave with it, like he's more an extra instrument, a part of it, rather than being like totally dominated by the instrumental. And just, oh, just how the fact the sample plays out in the last ladder of the song is just fucking good. The second track, Wait, is by far my favorite track of the album. It has a beautiful mix between a really nice drum sample and a vocal loop that is just heavenly, heavenly, ever my god, oh my god. And then the third track has, uh, yet again, another drum sample, with the first one being a bit more trap instrumental, and another vocal loop. Red Veil trying to stay on the right track, on the right path of his career to make sure he ensures his future is a lot safer, rather than being a product of his environment and have to do stuff that's less than legal. And I, I really do like it. It's quite an appealing track. It shows a lot about him and his environment, even though I don't know much about it, and not many people do because he's kept it very vague, but you know, it's still very eye-opening for someone this young, again, to be this aware of his surroundings and everything about him and the world, which not many people are, like, who are even into, like, their 40s or 34 years old. <laughs> I'll stop, I'll stop. Yeah. And the fourth track is a melodic, in the fourth track, Red Veil dips into his melodic bag of tricks where he is more smooth, has a singy flow, and he's going along with that really, really nice guitar instrumental. It's just, mm, it's just so smooth. Something like you could find off like an R&B album or maybe, or a boogie with a hoodie album. But with his voice, he's not drowning in the auto-tune. It's more just an added effect to go along with the guitar instrumental, which is a very good way to use auto-tune. Like I'm not saying the other way is bad, but just for a track like this and the subject matter, it works. The mixing is done extremely well. And then we get a feature from G-I-O, or is it G-O? I don't know, it's in all caps, so I just assume. And despite the use of a step back James Harden line, but a, I love this man's sound. He has a great voice and he adds so much to the vibe of this guitar melodic track and he's just smooth as fuck. The guy can genuinely sing and it works. And then after this, there is a distorted guitar outro, which is just, oh, the reverb on this and just everything about the strings is just so distorted. It's just really almost like a screaming guitar, but it's just been like muted down, which is why it has like such a beautiful quality about it, which is just, oh, God damn. And the, the next track, Revolutions, oh my goodness, Black Lives Matter protests and everything that's going on in America. And he parallels his come up in his career to the rise of this activism, which is just really, which is something that most rappers would do now in their careers, like having such a good story narrative and such a flip and double meanings to everything. And just the bars of this first verse. My goodness, my, my goodness, the rhyme, the flow, this, everything about it is just amazing. Just he just keeps going. He has so smooth. He's deep in that instrumental, which is very mad lib sounding, just very chopped up and soulful, which I really liked. And then the feature. Oh, goodness. Oh, I should. The Junie. Ju my goodness, she comes in hard with that. Mm, just really dead flow. Just cold pan, like a female Twenty One Savage combined with No Name, which I, I hate doing comparisons because. But still, that, that, that's her own sound, and it's just cold, smooth, just everything about it is just wonderful, and she has a lot of good bars at the end of her verse, and it's just, it's almost a bit, it's almost a bit depressing, 
and she just talks about just her nerve, her grind herself, and just her hopes. And just, again, with the instrumental having a very synth-heavy, lo-fi, chopped feeling. And then, at the end, there is a gorgeous mm, vocal sample that just ends off the track, capping it off to being, dare I say, just a great potential one of the best songs of this year in terms of conscious hip-hop. And then we get on to Clench, where I'm a bit underwhelmed by the very quiet, reserved, settled back flow of Red Veil, but I can tell he's lyrically on point. There is times where he's off the beat and on the beat, however he is a capable rapper, which has been shown from his entire discography, so I do believe he's doing it on purpose. The instrumental though is very bassy with the drums, it's heavy, there's so much force and weight to every single percussion that is heard throughout this instrumental. So I really rate that. And just as you think the track is coming a bit tiresome, Chris Patrick comes in and fucking obliterates it. He is fucking amazing. He's so lively. He brings so much energy to the track and he adds like a totally, totally different like vibe to the song. And it really capped it off very well. In fact, it resold me on the track. I was, I came back to it constantly after that because it's just, it's just that good. And then the seventh track, Grass, has a very soulful loop going on, very nice. And it has a lot of Earl refrains, though. I have to point that out, though. He has like a lot of, yeah, 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 and the fuck, and just like a little bit of mumbling that he does every now and then. There's nothing wrong with being in your contemporaries. As long as, as long as you're doing something different and that's not all you're doing and you're not just some clone who lives off of the legacy and style of Earl, which he does not. The features are very good. One very reminiscent of the late and great Injury Reserves member Grogs. A very, very... This has been a rough year for people, but... And there is a very, at the end, reflective verse from Cameron Bolden, who just really stood out to me in this song as the best part of the track. And just... It's just... He kept building himself up to a lot of his achievements and then just, like almost lost hope halfway and just started regressing down to this really negative but really insightful chain of his own life and my goodness it was it was beautiful fast lane is a piano trap song something i'd hear something from rimmer or a lot of the atlanta based scene or even blueface <laughs> but you know on, on the beat i like blueface that let's that i'm not being negative with him i just the man has a style one I read heavily, but Red Veil goes flex on his mental state, just how it's gaining on him, his own depression, his anxieties, his thoughts, his concerns are just overwhelming him, as, al along with some potential hints at drug use or street life that has come up into his life now, even when he's trying to come up and he's slowly trying to es escaping it, but it's only, s it's only coming back up for him, like it does with many artists, it's just pop, smoke, or XXX Tentacion, where a lot of the street stuff can catch up with you and it just voices his concerns there and it's a really nice track and again very mature and the last track i want to talk about is drown oh boy it's just this is something else everything on this album gives me something new something good and despite the few old refrains that i've mentioned this is a different kind of rap of yourself the instrumentals say a lot about Red Veil and his selection of beats and everything about him. It's just, it's just good. Drown being a synth guitar trap ballad is something that I weirdly didn't think I would need in this album, but I got it anyway, and it is very good. There is a beautiful melodic hook delivered by Red Veil that he's so smooth. There is just a little bit of reverb and his voice is naturally nice with it. And it just talks about drowning in one's own sorrows and life getting down on someone. And I really just like the style of the song. Everything about it is phenomenal. The last closing track, I wasn't a huge fan of Pigeon Man, but the instrumental is pretty solid. There are some good bars from Red Veil, but I did, it's not something I'd come away from loving. I did appreciate it and it did cap off the record very well. However, compared to the first nine tracks, it doesn't hold the candle. It would be something more suited as a highlight of this previous album. But yeah, and that's it. I just, my goodness, I was blown away by this album. Give this man a chance. 
He is just something else, something to look out for. And if he's producing something this fucking great at 16, give him a few more years, give him even better people around him, and it'll do well. I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this. And that's it. Check him out. Adios.